While one of the less well-known Japanese cruisers, the wreck of Furutaka is an interesting one. The oldest of Japan's heavy cruisers, this ship is a rare case of a Japanese ship sunk mostly by gunfire. Not air attack, not submarines, and not destroyer torpedoes. Maybe. Most reports will state a torpedo hit the ship. Petrol didn't find any obvious damage of that nature on the wreck. At least that I've seen. That doesn't rule out a torpedo hit, but it's worth noting. Regardless, the wreck is in pretty bad shape, even by the standards of Japanese shipwrecks. Not the worst out there, especially compared to something like Shimikaze, but not great either. Also, I will note before going forward that there aren't a lot of quality detail shots on the surface. I'll put comparisons where I can, but there won't be as many as on some other wrecks. As always, however, a brief overview of her final action before we look at Furutaka's wreck. On October 12, 1942, Furutaka sailed down the slot towards Guadalcanal. She was part of a formation of Japanese ships heading to bombard Henderson Field, one of many such actions during the time period. However, this would lead to one of Japan's rare defeats in a night battle, that being the Battle of Cape Esperance. The Japanese formation, under the command of Aritomo Goto, was caught completely by surprise. The American formation, under Norman Scott, had crossed their T, a naval term for sailing ahead of an oncoming formation. The force crossing the T would be able to use all their guns on the broadside, while the other formation could only use their forward weapons. Predictably, when the American fleet opened fire, it wrecked the Japanese formation. The flagship, Aoba, was riddled with shells and was lucky to survive, not helped by Admiral Goto thinking he was being fired on by friendlies and turning his fleet to the side. He would be mortally wounded as a result. Furutaka, meanwhile, left the Japanese line to duel USS Salt Lake City. This also saw the destroyer USS Duncan fire two torpedoes at the Japanese cruiser. Although, in classic early war fashion, those failed to do anything. The more dangerous thing from Duncan was a barrage of 5-inch shells, joining the 6- and 8-inch shells from the American cruisers. Upwards of 90 shells of various types would hit Furutaka during this action. And, as mentioned earlier, a reported torpedo hit from USS Buchanan. This was said to hit the port side, flooding the engine room and disabling Furutaka. Petrol's survey did not find any obvious torpedo damage, so this is something that might not have actually happened. Either way, Furutaka was dead in the water, and around 2.30 in the morning of October 12th, the cruiser sank stern first. Around 500 of her crew were plucked from the water by the Japanese. 33 were killed, and another 110 were counted as missing while 115 of the Japanese sailors were taken prisoner by the American fleet. At this point, Furutaka's service came to an end. Her wreck would elude discovery for its part until only five years ago, at least as of this recording. The wreck was found on February 25th, 2019 by our old friends on RV Petrol. Furutaka's wreck rests 1,400 meters, or 4,600 feet, beneath the surface still relatively shallow by Pacific War standards. It split into two major pieces, as the bow broke off at some point during the sinking. While I have been unable to find any sonar imagery, the wreck was surveyed in quite some detail by Petrol. There's a decent number of pictures to look at, especially compared to some other wrecks. Let's begin with the hull, and then work our way to the weaponry. First, in a similar vein to the Musashi wreck, we have the very tip of the bow. Unlike Musashi, this is resting on its side. Furutaka's bow landed this way after it broke off. That doesn't stop this from being an interesting picture, of course. The remnants of the Imperial Chrysanthemum is still here. However, just like with Musashi and other wrecks, it rotted away. The mounting is still recognizable, but the crest itself is long gone. Another angle on the bow seen here shows more of the crest, as well as the rest of the bow, which is surprisingly intact. 
And the reason I say surprisingly intact is very apparent looking at the other end of the bow. This side is anything but intact. I'm not sure from the available pictures how far back Furutaka broke, other than somewhere ahead of the number one turret, possibly quite close to that turret, as we'll see later on. For now, you can see inside that break. The internal frames are visible, as well as the bottom of the ship. I think this is probably the cleanest break I've seen on one of these shipwrecks. Generally, these are twisted up, and you can't see inside. This is almost a perfect cross-section of the break. Although, from looking at it, I can't say exactly why the ship broke. There's no obvious torpedo damage, as mentioned earlier, in the first picture or the second one. There's also no shell damage to be seen. Somewhere along the process of sinking, Furutaka's bow kind of just failed. The stresses of the sinking tore the ship apart, most likely. In any event, as we move further back on the hull, you'll see that the bridge also broke away. It came to rest on its side, around 600 meters away from the hull. That's a pretty good distance, which implies the bridge broke near the surface more time to drift away than if it broke towards the bottom. That said, the bridge is pretty broken up. Judging from the base of a platform, this picture is looking at it from the bottom. The round structure in the corner is apparently the base of a rangefinder. You can see it better here in this picture. Although there isn't much detail to speak of, it is worth noting that the rangefinder is resting in the mud, so the bridge is buried pretty deeply. You can see that rangefinder here on the surface. The next picture, meanwhile, is another angle on the bridge, featuring a second rangefinder, although this one has lost its outer cover. It gives a good look at the actual equipment inside, along with some debris from the bridge in the background. I would say the next two pictures are probably more interesting, though. A third rangefinder, or perhaps a fire control director, and one that is actually sitting upright. This one has a lot of marine growth on it, but the actual dial is still visible. Not so much in the first picture, which is more notable for the mounting. The second picture, however, shows a close-up look. As usual with these Japanese wrecks, if someone wants to take a swing at translating the writing, feel free. I always like those comments. Moving on, we have the searchlight tower, helpfully labeled in the upper corner. This is pretty intact, especially compared to the bridge. It was located between the funnels, which do seem to be gone. Other than that, not much to say. It's right here on the surface for reference. The next area of the wreck, even further back, is the torpedo maintenance area. Japanese torpedoes were deadly, to be sure, but they were also every bit as finicky as other torpedoes. This area of the ship was dedicated to ensuring those weapons functioned when needed. On the bottom now, it's rusty and covered in silt. Much of the detail is long gone. However, in the second picture, you can get a good look at two trolleys used to move the torpedoes around. I'll put an arrow to where those are. And somehow they didn't fall off as Furutaka sank. I honestly expected more damage here because the ship's torpedoes caught fire during the battle. Here's the general area on the surface from her sister ship, Kako. Regardless, that does round off the topside pictures. With nothing else to cover on the deck, let's look at the side of the ship now, beginning with some battle damage on the port side. It's here where the shell fire becomes apparent. There's multiple shell impacts in the side of the ship across these three images. Judging from the size of the shell holes, these seem to be from 8-inch shells. Furutaka was bombarded at around 5,000 yards, practically spitting distance. The damage isn't surprising. What is surprising in the second image is the intact portholes. One of them is right above a fairly large shell hole, but the glass inside it and the portholes next to it remain intact. That's actually pretty impressive. As for the third image, this is notable because it gives a view inside the ship. Not much can be made out, but the shell hole does allow for that view. As for the thing next to it, I would assume that's a hose of some sort. With that done, let's move to the stern. First we have the upper level, where you can see some empty mounting boxes, presumably for depth charges. 
as well as a fuzzy look at the stern deck. It looks like it might be collapsed in a little, but it's hard to say for sure. If it is, that isn't surprising. Japanese cruiser wrecks tend to have collapsed sterns. The second look is a bit higher up, with more of the deck shown, or at least the location of the deck. It's so covered in silt that you can't actually see the surface. From there, we move further down, where another shell hole is visible. This one also gives a little look inside the hole, with more mud filling up the damage. Even further down, there's a larger shell hole right next to an anchor. Even at her extreme stern, Furutaka was peppered with shell fire. It probably isn't surprising, with 90-odd shell hits, that so many are visible today. The next picture might be more interesting, however. Here we have the equivalent to finding the name on an American ship, the faded and rusted remnants of Furutaka's own name in Japanese characters, Hiragana, I believe. Past that, the final two pictures of the hull are another anchor and a propeller. The anchor, seen here, is covered in rust. The propeller, or screw, meanwhile, is in decent shape. It's buried in the bottom, as could be expected, but it isn't crushed or otherwise damaged. As that finishes off the hull, that just leaves the weaponry. Furutaka retained all three of her turrets, as well as one set of torpedo tubes. Moving back to the bow, we can begin with the number one turret. This is in decent enough condition, all things being equal. There's quite a bit of rust on it, but the actual turret is in one piece. Both of the barrels are also still in place. And, somewhat special for a Japanese wreck, they're straight and level. Beneath those barrels, although out of focus, the deck looks to be torn up. I can't be sure, but this might be where the bow broke away. It's hard to say for sure without a better look at the damage. Here's the general area on the surface, for sake of comparison. An interesting thing to note here, looking at the barrels from a bit further away. You can actually faintly see the shape of the bow. This landed very close to the rest of Furutaka's wreck. Not quite like a story as bow landing on her stern, but this is still impressive. Turret number two, on the other hand, was obliterated. There's barely anything left but twisted wreckage. Only a tiny bit of the turret armor, thin as it was, is left around the barrels. And those barrels are both pointing skyward at different angles. Whatever destroyed turret 2, it did a very thorough job of it. The final turret, number 3, is in better shape, at least from the front. There's only one picture showing the turret mostly intact, and the barrels pointing straight up, as is often the case on Japanese wrecks. The same can be said of the one secondary gun that was photographed, a single 12cm dual-purpose gun pointing towards the surface. This is pretty badly corroded, without much of the finer details left remaining. It's a similar story with the final two guns aboard the ship. Two twin 25mm gun mounts. One seen here, laying flat. The barrels have rusticles growing out from them, covering the side of the gun tub. That's not something I've seen before on one of these wrecks. As for the other mount, it's covered in marine life. In spite of that, however, it looks like it could be cleaned up if it were brought to the surface. Everything, or mostly everything, is still there and intact. Just rusted and covered up. Both of these are mounted by the searchlight tower from earlier. Which brings us to the end of the video, and the final weapons aboard Furutaka. Her most deadly weapons that proved entirely useless in the battle. If anything, they were more dangerous to herself than to her enemy. And those are the torpedoes. These were carried in two quadruple mounts, as seen here on her sister ship once more. The one pictured here is the port side launcher, which has lost its protective box. And, for that matter, one of the tubes. It's very apparent further back, where you see all the internals of the mount. This was covered up when on the surface. As was the bit in the back, seen in more detail here. Furutaka, like most Japanese ships, carried reloads for the torpedoes. These also had a protective box, but this is long gone. Two of the torpedoes, on the other hand, are still there. The box on the starboard side is a bit better, 
but one of the torpedoes has fallen out. As for the starboard torpedo tubes, those fell off during the sinking. They're resting on the bottom, away from the wreck. I would guess that the box over the port tubes was shot or burned away because the starboard mount is in much better shape. The thin metal is rusting away, gradually, but the shape is still recognizable. And, as you can see here, all four of the tubes are still in place. I don't see the torpedoes themselves, but those might have fallen away during the sinking. Or, alternatively, they're just covered in mud. Either way, with that, we come to the end of this video. A bit on the longer end compared to most recent shipwreck videos. Furutaka just had more pictures to cover, which isn't a bad thing by any means. Thank you for watching, remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy the content, and I'll see you in the next one.